Powered by Rev Media in partnership with TSN, this is Season 5, Episode 58 of the Rain Drakes Hockey Podcast. And it is presented by our title sponsor, Canadian Club Whiskey, who have introduced the first release of the Canadian Club Invitation Series, CC 15-Year-Old Cherry Cask. Signature CC Classic 12-Year-Old Whiskey, finished with a secondary aging in Oloroso Sherry Cass. And uh, Ray, you're in one, aren't you? For the foreseeable future here, my friend, when it comes to travel, when it comes to game after game after game, you're in one now. Yeah, the uh, I would say, Drake's the first 10 to 12 days of the playoffs are, you know, where it's the most intense, busy, and... Uh, so I've got a, I'm in Florida today for the Leafs. It's Tuesday, Thursday. I'm in Denver for Edmonton season ends. I fly home Friday. I fly to New York on Saturday and then have a uh, game Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, <laughs> Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, before we get another day off. So, but it's, <laughs> it's, it's the best time of year. Thankfully the games are always so cool and it's fun to be part of, but yeah, the old, uh, the old sleep uh, sleep <laughs> clock is low. Yeah. Now, are you are you recording the games that you're not doing? Um, but you know that you're diving into that series, or do you just cherry pick and make sure that you you watch the highlights and do all your prep work and do all your rating to make sure that nothing has been missed? No, uh, a bit of both. But I mean, like I when I get home from the game on Sunday. Um, the game I do Monday will be game two of that series. So I'll watch game one. And then yeah, this is where it gets a little easier though. My my <laughs> next game will be game two of the series I did game one of. Like that's the only one I've got to know. i it's easier not doing radio every day because then yeah. you gotta be up to speed on all of it. But I get home and I watch what I watch and check out if there's good finishes or plays I need to catch up on. And so I, I get a pretty good idea what's going on, but the series I'm in, <laughs> I know the ones that I'm not going to get like a air mailed, a game out of left field. That's that like, right. I'm not going to end up with a game of a series. I haven't seen six times yet. Right. That's not going right. to happen. Well, let's see. It, that, well, it that. shouldn't <laughs> happen. It shouldn't happen. You remember the old Chris Cuthbert day week? Was it called the Washington game on a on a telephone, like on a landline? Right. Yeah. Because everything went bonkers with the with the production truck and everything else. Yeah, that so was when that stuff happens, right? That was early <laughs> in his career, right? And it, very early. Yeah. yeah, he, yeah. he did call it off a of full. Can, <laughs> for those of you that don't know Chris Cuthbert, the image of him. <laughs> with a phone and his notes and uh spilled coffee oh, it's, <laughs> it, it would it would have been something to see you know they got yeah. those booth cams yeah wouldn't that have been yeah. awesome the cuthbert cam to see that nothing to see here mr move it along, <laughs> move it along sir <laughs> well speaking of great finishes i mean we've got one yeah um you know it's coming right down to game 82 of the nhl regular season so We'll start there in the East in our headlines, Ray, brought to you by Tim Hortons. Introducing the new greatest duo set. Three cards in each pack with a chance to find a collect-to-win golden prize card and win duos theme prizing. And this includes a 2024 Hyundai Venue or a 2024 mm. Hyundai Elantra. You could also win a trip to watch a Montreal Canadiens game, have a meet and greet with Canadiens captain Nick Suzuki. How about a $500 Tim card and a $500 ESO gift card? Phenomenal prizes available only at Tim's. So the Eastern Conference playoff race will need game 82 to determine that eighth and final playoff spot in the East. Huge games to start the week Monday night. So Washington beats Boston. Lingren with a 16-save uh, shutout. Uh, Detroit falls 4-2 after two periods. They found a way. They were trailing 4-2. They found a way with Lucas Raymond. Ray getting his 30th man, of that, the year to tie. That kid's starting to jump, isn't he? <laughs> He's, He's starting a to real pop, player, man. man. And then he gets the game-winning goal in overtime. What a gritty win by the Red Wings. Enormous extra point there. But the Caps have the tiebreakers, we now know, in regulation. So Detroit plays again. They'll play Montreal tonight as we record Tuesday. Washington is in Philadelphia. The Penguins have to watch. They're sitting one game back after a gutsy win over Nashville. Crosby scored, I guess it's his 42nd 
right. of the year to open the scoring for the Pens on Monday night. So they'll wrap up their season tomorrow versus the Islanders. I mean, where do we start? I guess let's start with Detroit. And because there's more to talk about with Crosby and the Penguins. Um, yeah, I mean, 31 goals on the season for Lucas Raymond. You know, you've got some great stories there. Patty Kane, 47 points, almost a point per game player since his return. You know, what about Shane Goss bear? I mean, three point mm-hmm. effort in that hockey game yesterday. So, how, how, the about, the, uh, are pushing. how about the play Goss Despair made on the tying yeah. goal? Uh, he goes as high as he can to keep the puck in the zone or else it's out and they, you know, play's gone. And uh, Raymond scores and gets the winner. And so it, I think what I like best about the last part of the year is you're like, yeah, that team's dead. Yeah. Oh, no, they're not. Oh, yeah. that team's, they're good. They're, they're fine. No, they're not. They lose three in a row when they're, <laughs> and, you know, when they're in the soup. And the crazy part is – you know, so the, the team that holds their own destiny is Washington. Yeah. Washington wins and they're in. Yeah. And so remember when they signed Darcy Kemper to a five-year ex- free agent deal? Mm-hmm. And they're going to go back-to-back with Lindgren here. Lindgren's taken over the number one job yeah. and has been terrific for them. If somebody could figure out which Capitals team is going to show, like <laughs> they're either good or like they don't lose they they're either good or they get smashed right like so they're i'm looking here their goal differential is 38 minus <laughs> like how are they even near the playoffs i know and so if if they and philly this game is everything to philly like philly they need all kinds of help but they could make it yeah but they have to win yeah. and they have to win in regulation because washington can't get a point yeah and so the you know the wings and the penguins and Philly they're they're hanging and hoping every you know a bunch of other scenarios happen and man it's amazing but the caps are the team that controls their destiny so because of everything you've just said around the Washington Capitals does that make them certainly an intriguing possibility but a difficult out in round 1 of the playoffs because man you don't know what you're going to get you just you don't you know the star power is still there in a large way. Um, you've got the depth as we saw on Monday night with Dowd scoring and John Carlson from the point. I mean, Washington, you know, like Pitt might just have a little bit of juice left here. I guess they could. I. It's funny though, like you know, Washington holds holds the cards, but I, I think the one eight in the East. Yeah, it's tough. Uh, sets up as the only series that I think could be, uh, you know, quick. Yeah. Like it feels quick. Yet I think if there's one team that could throw a, you know, a flat tire into that, it's Detroit. Okay. Yeah. Um, just I, I just think they would play at a million miles an hour. Washington will apparently check you into submission. They held Boston to what sixteen shots last night. You said Drake's. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so like. Uh, but I just think that that one eight feels like the the one series that that you could that I don't think anybody will pick the eight seed. Put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, Sidney Crosby, the Pittsburgh Penguins' dreams of being a playoff team are fading. You know, yes. They are, but they're still real. There's still possibilities here that are in play. Obviously, the Penguins need you know the Capitals and the Red Wings to lose. Now, assuming they don't quite make. Assuming they don't quite make it, Ray, what do you what do you make of this run that Pittsburgh has accomplished? It's been incredible. It, yeah, it, it it really has. Um, if they make it or don't make it, it doesn't change necessarily my view of what has to happen there. You know, like they're they're nowhere near deep enough. They're you know their best players are they're not getting older. They're old. And, you, you know, you can Sid tug the boat again, like 42 goals by himself. Yeah. No, no, they need help. And so I, I think it's been a remarkable testament to, to Crosby, not that he mm-hmm. needed another one, but when that team was like, they were dead and yeah. he literally dragged them off the mat. And mm-hmm. um, I, I just, they're, 
they're so much a wild card and they're but they're very thin and i i just i think there's change coming there like that roster needs to change um and this you know it's hard to change it fast right yeah. it, it really yeah. is they they like some of their good young pieces i know that i mean you 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 see drew o'connor there's some other pieces yeah. there he's that, he's that one of coming. he's the yeah. one guy i would say this year that has taken a a real yeah, I agree. legit step he's yeah. he's had an excellent year uh for them um you know joseph had a on the blue line had a really rough first half and a pretty good second half mm -hmm. um but you you start to get into those guys they got in the Gensel trade and they're 20. You know, like you gotta, you know, Ponomariov and that, you you gotta wait yeah. for those guys. Like they're yeah. they're just not, you know, it's not just around the corner. And so there there's some uneven turf in front of them, I think. Sure. All right, let's go to the top of the East Ray. What about the New York Rangers? Um, they claim the President's mm -hmm. Trophy. Um, and, you know, we kind of set that up a minute ago talking about, eh, what about the Washington Capitals? I mean, whoever the eighth seed ends up being, you know, is literally uh, in a real tough predicament up against, you know, the top team yeah. in the East. Um, I was going to phrase the question, is this team for real? I mean, obviously they're for real. You don't, yeah. you don't, you don't put up the points that they've amassed all season long. They've had some blips, but they didn't, you know, fall apart at any one point of the season. The goaltending is as good as any. So how would you handicap the chances of the Rangers just period as being a top Stanley Cup contender? There, there's no real apparent weakness to them. Yeah. I would say if there's if there's one spot I I'd be a little bit uneasy about it's whoever's gonna play right wing with uh Zabana Jad and Kreider. They mm -hmm. brought in Jack Roslevic, and he was scratched last week. He scored last night. You know, they've moved some people in and out of there. So that seems like a place they're maybe not quite certain about, but they've got an excellent defense. Their forwards are deep. Uh, Lafreniere is the guy that's taken the jump there he this has. year. He's really been terrific for them. Uh, Vincent Trocek has had a marvelous year. And then, you know, certainly one of the – uh, and on my ballot anyway one of the one of the top uh five mvp candidates and in, in artemi panarin yeah yeah uh, a tremendous year that he's had i this is a really good team and yet when you when you look at it you know like I, i'm i'm florida and carolina kind of stand out to me mm -hmm. in the east as as like playoff team sort of style and i'm like yeah but they're not better than the rangers Right. Yeah. You know, so I, I would say those are, those are, would be my, if I'm handicapping, those are my three Eastern favorites. Yeah. Carolina, and I, Florida look, Rangers. Yeah. And I'm with you and I, and, and I might extend that, uh, you know, we, we kind of overlook a little bit the Rangers. I mean, by we, maybe just a collective fan base media in general and maybe Boston as well. Right. And, and you can pick holes in the Boston Bruins because of what they don't have. And they're not going to have any time soon unless they find a Patrice Bergeron or David Krejci or, you know, the, the holes that they have to fill. But I, I think that's kind of the framework of the East is the three teams that you mentioned with Florida, Carolina, and the New York Rangers. And we'll see how Boston can fare. Maybe they yeah. surprise some people. They, their power play is an absolute mess right now. Yeah. Like it really is. And to the point where, uh, Monday at practice, Jim Montgomery basically made two completely different units. And he's like, what we're using doesn't work. We got to, you know, we've got to look at it in a different way. And um, right. it's obviously pretty late in the year to be going, you know, you know, back to the drawing board. And I, I have, the Bruins have had an excellent year. Um, their goaltending is exceptional. You it know, is. It yeah. really is. And, um, but I, I have them just a smidge below those other teams. I, you know, okay. For me, the, the top three are the top three. All right. Well, we'll continue to analyze all the matchups uh, in the next episode of the Rain Rigs Hockey Podcast on Friday. Final regular season games are Thursday night. All right. Over to the West. Connor McDavid, surprised to no one, scored his 100th assist last night after returning from a tweak. Missed a few games there. So 
it, it now looks in terms of the scoring race like it'll be Kucherov, McKinnon, McDavid going one, two, three. Uh, <laughs> I mean, lofty numbers. We've been yeah. sidetracked by the you know Austin Matthews' pursuit of, of 70, which could happen against the Florida Panthers on TSN tonight. Maybe it's against Tampa Bay. doesn't really matter. But not overlooked, but maybe – shadowed a little bit is what Kucherov, McKinnon, and McDavid have done mm-hmm. in putting up piles and piles of points this year. It, it's been a really a pretty terrific regular season, and there's been some just highlight performances. Like, night after night, it seems one of those guys is you know, the forefront of the highlight package. Yeah. It's, been, it's been amazing. And you know, I mean, Kucherov, what's he got, 141 points now? Like, that, like it's, the, those numbers are 1980s numbers. Yeah. You know, him and McKinnon and McDavid, you know, McDavid's 100 points. Matthews is at 69 goals. And, yeah. Um, of course, and I, I was pretty happy he didn't get a 70th in Toronto the other night because we're doing the game tonight. And I'm like, well, I'd like him to have a chance here. You yeah, know, kind of makes it a little more fun in the broadcast. Uh, I... The, those numbers, though, were just, they just don't look right, um, it, you know, in this era of the game. That, those are from years gone by. It's yeah. amazing seasons. How about a quick thought on, on Matthews? Because it could happen tonight against Florida. What do you make of Sheldon Keefe's comment the other day? Uh, just honestly talking about how big of a distraction it, it is. He, you know, he appreciates that everybody wants it. The head coach wants Austin Matthews to get 70, but. I just I don't feel like you you change the decision making of your roster, right? If Austin Matthews had something that was bugging him a little bit, no different than Connor McDavid, well, at some point in the last week, ten days, two weeks, he probably sits a game or two. Yeah. Now he's not going to sit. I mean, it's two games before the the start of the playoffs. I mean, he aside from the seventy goals, I mean, he wants to keep his momentum going. I would think as he gets set for a best of seven. Yeah, I mean, you don't have to play him 23 minutes a night, but no, you know, but you know, it's a, you know, it's a distraction. I, I pose to, to the Leafs is San Jose's 146 goals minus. How's that mm. for a distraction? This is great stuff. A guy's yeah. got a chance to make a historic number to get to 70. How can this be a distraction? What's, yeah. is he trying harder to score? Or like I just I think I understood what, what Sheldon was trying to say. I just I, I don't I don't see it. I don't yeah. see it. Like do you th- did all of a sudden Austin Matthews think, gee, I should shoot the puck? No, he shoots the puck every time he gets it. And he's yeah. he's the I mean, he's as dominant a player goal scoring wise as as we've seen. I mean, this is a in a in a long, long time. This is his historic numbers right now, like I want to say his goals per game are third in the history of the game. Lemieux, Bossy, and him. Yeah. Yeah. How's that a distraction? I don't get it. And I, yeah. I, I was a little, it, it's almost like creating your own issue here. There's enough mm-hmm. issues. What are you going to create another one for? It is a team base, though, that the idea that everybody wants Matthews to score the 70th. So you're looking for him even more than you might normally, and it's taking away from your team game. Oh, uh, I don't know. When you get in the offensive zone, are they not looking for him anyway? If they're not, <laughs> yeah, I'd say start fair. looking for him. Like, <laughs> like, and, and then how does that how does that affect Holmberg or yeah. – Doer or Reeves or the eight forwards that never get on the ice with them. Mm-hmm. It, it doesn't affect anything. And the, and you can't control if the fans are excited about it. Like, of course they're going to be excited about it. Of course. I, there are, there are bigger issues than whether what, you know, to be distracted by. Yeah. Than whether Austin Matthews is at 69 or 70 goals. All right, back to the West, right? Vegas and L.A. still jockeying the Pacific. The Kings lose to the Wild, uh, one point ahead of Vegas. You also have Colorado and, and Winnipeg. They could flip in the Central Division. So, I mean, does any of this really matter? Um, you know, I guess you're you're trying to maintain momentum if you're Colorado. You're trying, <laughs> yeah, you're it does trying matter to make for a them. statement, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah I, I, it's not the statement. It's like, what the hell are we doing? Yeah. Like they have drinks. They have, um, of course, they get their lunch handed to them in uh, at home by Winnipeg. Um, I'm just looking here because I've got it. They've given up 26 goals against in the last five games. They, they've, they're going nowhere it, at that pace. So, you know, they've got a few days off here. Mm-hmm. Um, they've got, uh, you know, some practice time. They've got one game left. Um, they, they've got to hopefully, or they're going to hope, be hopeful that Georgiev finds his game again because, oh mm-hmm. boy, it's, you know. So they get they thump, get thumped 7 nothing by Winnipeg. They go to Vegas, play two perfect periods. They're up 3 nothing. And then they lose four three in overtime. Yeah. Like they're spring and leaks here, and um, it's a bad time of year for it. Um, but you know, isn't it interesting? Like how long ago was it? Three weeks that Winnipeg couldn't beat anybody. I know, struggling. And now they they seem like a team again that you're like, ooh, I'm not so sure that we'll mm-hmm. line up to play them. Yeah. Um, the the West, while it seems like the East has those three teams that are a step aside. The West feels like it's got about five or six <laughs> monsters, like that would I be agree. really, really tough outs. Yeah. And and the, the West feels deeper, but as as we all know, like after after one round one, a lot of those teams that give you the depth of conference are gone anyway. Yeah. So many good storylines around the National Hockey League as the regular season comes to a close, but maybe we buried the lead here um, and. That's because, I guess it was Friday, right? The Vegas Golden Knights announced that Mark Stone had been cleared medically to return to ice and would practice with the Vegas Golden Knights. So medically cleared from a lacerated spleen. Now, I guess the doctors had an indication of how long, you know, uh, an injury, an internal problem like that might take. They didn't disclose that initially. They just said he's done for the regular season. Questionable for the playoffs Mm -hmm. so look we we you and i had an exchange over this on on friday or the weekend we know that the vegas golden knights are playing within the rules but the scenario of how it all comes together and the fact that this has happened a couple of few times now Mm -hmm. specific with this player does conjure up some some negative attention Fair enough. Like there's been noise no. around this. Yeah. Well, there should be because it's it's not like the first time it's happened. Yeah. And so, you know, Vegas uses the LTI R space and they go get this year it's Thomas Hurdle. And, you know, in the past it was Jack Eichel. And yeah, you know, it's and it always it feels like it's always something. But what's really interesting is where fans are angry at, at Vegas for exploiting this, they should be angry at the NHL. It's got nothing to yeah. do with Vegas. Vegas yeah. is Vegas is presenting the, um, or is presented with the rules, and they're doing what they want to do within the rules. Because if it was illegal, it would just get nixed. Correct. And if it was illegal, yeah. I would say there would be about eight general managers in a conga line phoning Gary Bettman saying this is illegal and he'd hang up and there'd be another guy. Hey, this is illegal. And I, I assume the teams want clarity as to what the injury was and who looked at them and how that all came about. But if the NHL feels this is a real problem, this is something they've got to get to. It's got, well, I'll say it's got nothing to do with Vegas, but yeah. that's not true. It's got very little to do with Vegas. Right. Right. Because any other team could do it. They could do yeah. the same thing. You need the injury to a high-salaried player at the right yeah. time yeah. to be able to exploit this. I, I just don't understand. And I guess, you know what, when they first introduced the CBA and all the changes and the salary cap that, that was forced down the throats of the players, you know, I guess there are going to be details. There are going to be loopholes, uh, as we, we like to throw out there. That may be slipped through, right? But this seems like a pretty big miss by both the league and and maybe the Players Association that you wouldn't have some sort of postseason salary cap, right? I mean, you're in it all year long. Oh, with the exception of a couple of months 
in the playoffs, and then you can carry one hundred and forty million dollars, and everything's fine. That's okay. Yeah. Like, I, I I would it's, think it's though, bizarre it's like, to me. yeah, but I I would think they they did they don't even look at or clearly didn't even look at the playoffs because the players don't get paid. Yeah, yeah. and so you know, in a big picture, it's like, well, it doesn't even matter because they don't get paid. Yeah. However, yeah. those players get, you know, get paid commiserate most of the time on their, on their skill. Sure. And so with this issue, not thought about it's, it's opened up a trap door and they cannot, I had to assume they can't just change it for no. next year. That's this no. would have to be collectively bargained. Correct. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. So you can't just say, "Oh yeah, next year we're going to have a salary cap for the playoffs." Like your twenty man roster. You know, my my simple fix is your twenty man roster can't exceed whatever the salary cap number is. Right. Like like in the season you have twenty three players. You could have fifty players sitting there all playoffs, but your sure. in game roster is it has to I fit like in the cap. And yeah, to me, I it like would be it. easy. And I'm like, who would disagree with that? I wonder. And no. I'm like, no, I don't know. But they'd have to collectively bargain it. Yeah, and that's that's what a handful of general managers, part of that executive GM committee, that's their homework assignment, right? You know, get through the regular season, get through the playoffs maybe, but you're assigned to X number of GMs. Have the conversations. Now that we put it on the table and we want you to discuss and, and go through the, the, the different layering effects of all of this, next time we meet, let's have a conversation and maybe map out longer term how we approach this, so. Anyway, it's on well, the radar. Well, I can guarantee you thing. the new CBA will have a provision for yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. All right, Ray, those are your headlines. Thank you to Tim Hortons. Tim's greatest duos trading cards with two iconic players on every card, like Matthew and Brady Kachuk or Brady and Keith Kachuk. Rivals, family, and more connected like never before. Tim's greatest duos trading cards. Our interviews on Ray and Driggs brought to us by Canadian Club Whiskey, who have introduced... First release of the CC Invitation Series, CC 15-year-old Sherry Cask. All the hallmarks of class, uh, uh, classic Canadian club with the added richness and sweetness of Sherry. Uh, a couple of questions. Ask Ray and Dregs anything. Send us your questions on X or Instagram at Ray and Dregs or on our website, rayanddregs.com. Bob Nordberg, Ray, from Seattle, says, hey, love the pod. The stories, the banter, your knowledge of everything NHL. Hey, when you start a question like this, automatically you're, you're getting acknowledged at some point. Thank you for that, Bob. <laughs> so with the benefit, Ray, of hindsight, if you could pick one Stanley Cup winner between 1973 and 2023 and oh stand between the benches for all four rounds, what team might it be? What year would it have been? And of course, why? Fun question by Bob. I like it. Okay, so right away, I think of the Flyers, the Broad Street Bullies. Okay, I, I think that must have been mayhem. Well, keep your head up. <laughs> yeah. Or there was mayhem going one way, and a bunch of really quiet people on the other side. Like I, I, I think that would be. That would be a really interesting one. Now, I I started in uh, December of '84, okay, and I can yeah. tell you those great Oiler teams, right? They had lots to say. Oh, for sure, because they were by far the best. And like, what <laughs> were you going to say back? And there, when Marty McSorley and Kevin McClellan were young guys, they they played on the same line. Marty was a forward, and they'd stand by the end of the bench you know, nearest the visitor's bench. And when you'd go by there, you'd just hope that they weren't going to pick on you. <laughs> what were you going to say, right? Like yeah, these two yeah. monsters are hanging over the the edge of the edge of the bench. So I'd say, well, those Islander teams would be... Dynasty years, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They, would, they would have been really interesting to, to listen to as they kind of ran their way through the league. Um Maybe the Montreal Canadiens again, if you if we go all the back, all the way back no, to seventy three as a time period. Yeah, yeah, but I, I don't I don't know that there was they don't I don't know them, but I it, it doesn't picture as a or for me yeah. anyways like a a really it would be, would have been fun to watch Guy Lafleur from there. Yeah, of course. And, Between and the bases, though, is unique. It, That'd be fun. It, yeah. Um, 
Pittsburgh in the early 90s. Oh, they, boy. They had lots to say. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we were, you know, we would bark back and forth with them. But they, had, they were great, and they had lots to say, and they were so good. Yeah. So it's hard to pick one, right? It, I mean, it, so, it really is. Yeah. But I... The Philly Pittsburgh stuff, uh, that or Islander Ranger stuff, though between the benches for those two types of series, yeah. Islander Rangers and Philly Pitt. Um, yeah. I did the one series, I don't know, Drags, I don't know what year it was, but like game one was like 10 7. It and yeah. it Giroux ran over Crosby, it was wild, and I. I interviewed Giroux before game seven and it was live and he dropped an F bomb. He was, I don't even think he had any clue that he said it. He was just so <laughs> hyped to go. And that would have been, that, that was a memorable series for sure. That, that Pittsburgh, uh, Philly sure. one for me. Okay. Uh, one more here. Austin Kluber, I believe is how it's pronounced. It's a golf related question. What oh. is a non-standard golf tool slash accessory ray that you cannot live without when you play around i like automatically i think towel of course i need yeah. a wet towel i don't like dirty stuff uh yeah. maybe a range finder is that too obvious that's been become part of the the bag yeah, I'm, I'm too old to carry my bag anymore i don't know yeah like i'm i'm not carrying my bag no chance <laughs> <laughs> I get the little wheelie thing that I push it along there. Why not? Yeah, exactly. Well, um, hold on. Is it remote control, that one? No, or do you I don't push. My, uh, my kids are, they're talking about that, you know, it's a, you know, a, a birthday present this summer. And uh, I, I, I do <laughs> every once in a while. Well, I guess it was more with the early ones. Yeah. <laughs> You'd see this bag. Is the rolling runaway? down the fairway and some guy <laughs> running behind him with his <laughs> that, you know that would be me right yeah, like yeah crash yeah. into a tree somewhere um yeah i yeah i i need the for me it would be the the bag roller thingy whatever mm. that's called the cart yeah i don't i i like to walk though i don't want to ride i like to no. walk yeah well then in that case you get the best of both worlds it's not heavy lifting literally yeah. and you get the exercise Perfect. And, right, and we're about time. We're about time to start really thinking about that, Trace. Yes, we are. I See, that it, it is. To me, it's like the cabbage. You know, when I get to May, then I allow myself to start thinking of the projects, the golf, the fishing, and all of that. But we're in April. And it's still too early. There's too much stuff that has to happen. Right, yeah. I get too excited. But that, that kind of is like the beacon on the horizon for me. Yeah, for sure. All right. Uh, we... We got your travel schedule. Um, the yep. scenarios will play itself out here for you and everybody in terms of the matchups and whatnot in the next couple of days. But uh, yeah, you're just living out of a hotel and an airplane basically yep. for a bit here. Next little bit. And um, yeah, the the stuff that, that really stinks, of course, is I miss a lot of soccer games and, yeah. you know, and, uh, you know, I'll be, uh, there'll be a lot of late nights with, uh, you know, be be watching the Canucks, and you know it's uh, you know for Cami and the management team there, like uh, you know, it's their first time in, right? And yeah, so they're it's fun. really really exciting time for them. So this is the best time, man. It's just the best, and, it is. and uh, look forward to it. And uh, I guess by the time we're on next, we'll actually know who the hell is playing each other. All right, buddy. Safe travels. Well, Enjoy your week, and uh, we will uh, we'll talk. I guess Friday afternoon sometime, right? Yep, you bet. And thank you awesome. to our sponsors who continue to support Rain Rigs and make it possible. Our title sponsor, Canadian Club Whiskey, and Tim Hortons. Until next time, stay safe, everybody. Mm -hmm.